Good morning, Redland family. By my count, this is day 18 since the last day of school and us making the decision at Redland to not meet in person as a church, but only to gather together virtually. For some of us, we're spending a lot of time with our family in a confined space, and it's getting a little claustrophobic, and we are missing our alone time. Some of us, however, feel like we are marooned on a desert island, and we've had all the alone time that we'll need for 2020 and part of 2021. I have to admit, I'm feeling a little more marooned than claustrophobic. While it's good for us to be flattening the curve, I'm seeing the world through a different lens than a few weeks ago. I know for many of us, Tom Hanks was the first person we were familiar with who was diagnosed with a coronavirus. It somehow made it more real. Now he is reported to be well on his way to recovery, which is great. But the news reports reminded me of his movie, Castaway. I wanted to share a short excerpt from the movie with you now. Hello? Anybody? We live and we die by time, don't we? Tom Hanks. You wouldn't have a match. Any chance, would you? At the edge of the world. <laughs> Now, the movie is certainly a bit more extreme than our situation, but for me at least, I have certainly experienced some of the same emotions the character Tom Hanks played has experienced. As I've been praying through this isolation, the Holy Spirit brought to mind the story of Jesus when he was tested in the wilderness in Matthew 4, verses 1 through 11. So let's read that together. When Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you. And they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. I see that Jesus faced three familiar challenges. First, he was hungry. And while we may not be physically hungry like Christ, we all have a hunger. Hunger for social connection, hunger for some alone time, Hunger for normal, familiar routines. Hunger for a sense of security. Jesus reminded us that we should not rely only on what we miss most for our significance. Our significance comes from the word of God. Remember what Jesus taught in the Sermon on the Mount from Matthew 5, verse 6? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Second, Jesus was offered the opportunity to control his destiny. Now, Jesus actually was in control, but Satan was challenging him to redirect what he was called to do and who he was called to be. Our temptation is falling into the trap that we are actually in control of our lives and those circumstances affecting our lives. We can imagine that we can control our destiny until unexpected things happen. Then we are upset because we are no longer in control, when in fact, we were never in control. This goes for little things, being stuck in traffic, or for big things, being, expo being exposed to a strange new virus by a random stranger. Third, Jesus was tempted by Satan to worship false gods. We are all susceptible to chasing after false gods when our stress level is high. We need to be aware of that possibility and guard against it. In 1 Corinthians 10, verses 12 and 13, we read the words of Paul. 
So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so you can endure it. How do we incorporate the truths to hunger after God, to remember God is in control, and to rely on God when we encounter temptation during this time of extra stress and the unfamiliar of forced isolation? What does this mean in practical terms? In the past week or so, I have read several articles on how astronauts handle the isolation of being in space for many months. In particular, one astronaut stood out to me. Astronaut Scott Kelly is the identical twin who was aboard the space station as part of the twin study in 2015 and 2016. I remember that well because I'm a twin. My sister Penny and I are fraternal, not identical, but as we were chatting the other day, it is sometimes hard for us to be alone because we didn't learn early on how to be alone because we were always together even before we were born. So what does Scott Kelly have to say about isolation? Oops, that's not the twin video about the coronavirus I meant to show you. But isn't that how some of us feel with some of our family members right now? Thought you might like that chuckle. Okay, here is an actual picture of Scott Kelly, the astronaut. Scott Kelly has seven tips to counter self-isolation that he relied on while he lived in space for over a year. Number one is follow a schedule. Maintaining a plan will help you and your family adjust to a different work and home life environment, he said. We are told in Psalms 90 verse 12, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Number two, pace yourself. Kelly warned that when you're living and working in the same place for days on end, work can have a way of taking over everything if you let it. He recommends carving out time for non-work activities, whether binge watching your favorite TV show or setting a strict time to go to bed. Jesus even had to guard his solitary time from his disciples. We see in Mark 1, verses 35 and 36, that very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Moms, dads, do you hear that sometimes at home? Tip number three is go outside. Kelly recommends going outside at least once a day, as long as you abide by social distancing and stay at least six feet from other people. Get outside, look at the birds, look at the flowers, consider God and all his creation and be reminded that he cares very much for you. Tip number four is get a hobby. Kelly recommends reading. The quiet and absorption you can find in a physical book, he says, one that doesn't ping you with notifications or tempt you to open a new tab, is priceless. He also recommends learning a musical instrument. So we're making some art or trying handcraft. You know, do some artwork, make a rainbow. Psalm 33, 3 says, sing to him a new song, play skillfully and shout for joy. Tip number five, keep a journal. Writing about your days will help you put these experiences in perspective and let you look back later on what this unique time in history has meant. Luke, one of the authors of the gospels, wrote in the beginning of Luke chapter one, Many have undertaken to draw up an account of things that have been fulfilled among us so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. Number six, take time to connect. 
This one really is self-evident. Scientists have found that isolation is damaging not only to our mental health, but to our physical health as well, especially our immune systems, Kelly warns. Technology makes it easier than ever to keep in touch, so it's worth making time to connect with someone every day. It might actually help you fight off viruses. You know, the writer of Hebrews thought a lot like astronaut Kelly. Hebrews 10 verses 24 and 25 reads, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. And finally, tip number seven, listen to experts, Kelly writes. Living in space taught me a lot about the importance of trusting the advice of people who know more than I did about their subjects. When it comes to news and updates about the coronavirus, you should make an effort to go to reputable sources and avoid suspicious content on social media. About a week ago, my aunt shared some verses from Proverbs chapter 19. The one who gets wisdom loves life. The one who cherishes understanding will soon prosper. Listen to advice and accept discipline, and at the end, you will be counted among the wise. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. So that's the rundown. Remember Tom Hanks, twins, and we will get through this isolation together. Let's pray. Lord, help us in our new circumstances to not be overwhelmed or lonely. Help us to find ways to stay connected and to establish healthy routines that draw us closer to you. And as you sign off from this place, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you are called to peace. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And today, whatever you do in word or in deed, do it all in the name of Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. See everyone back here tomorrow. Stay safe. Stay healthy.